entertainment, premier sports like NBA, American football, major soccer leagues, movies, and favorite TV shows with endless content and no service interruptions. Sweetheart, is that all? No, they also have adult content included with parental guidance. Also, check out their six-month plan for only $96 and their 12-month plan for only $176. Wow, honey, isn't that a great news? Yes, but sweetheart, how can we get in touch? Yes, you can contact us at 226-946-1090 or visit our website at www.globalnetitv.com. <laughs> Good morning, Morgan. Yeah, good morning, first. Um, uh, echo from your A. Yes, yeah. I know. I noticed. I noticed. Yeah. Well, I I put a new cable in. I hope that's not a problem. Okay, it's a little bit okay now because I'm not getting you again. The uh, echo, I'm not getting it. You think so? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I don't get the echo myself. So maybe the new thing we're getting adjusted. All right, folks. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to a brand new edition of the program. Today is... Um, I'm still getting that noise. I bought a brand new cable for that. The audio cable. Uh -huh. So I shouldn't get that. Uh, well, if the cable were the problem, and it looks like it's not the cable, it looks like it's something else. Because I'm still getting that noise. Yeah, we can just do it, and after that, you can uh, let our technician know. Yeah, um, so he can, you know, help try to sort it out. Welcome, folks. Uh, very good to be here. Some very interesting developments. Uh, very interesting developments. So, you all you all remember the case involving Charles Sherleaf, uh, who who claimed that there were uh, withdrawals from his bank account. Yeah, GD Bank, G GZ Bank, um, and uh, the bank employees employees of the bank they are claiming. That it was Charles Shelley's wife who withdrew the funds. Mm. Uh, yeah, in fact, um, the Liberian National Police submitted a, a report to the Monrovia City Court on yesterday, Tuesday, the 8th of September. In that report, they claimed that 886550 and 50 $580, that's $886,580 USD. USD, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. 10480000 Liberian dollars from a joint checking account titled uh, Bojelani Guest House Incorporated. I mean, they own a guest house together. Because? Hmm? What is it? Uh, who tried to reach up Costa this morning? I don't know. I can hear you, Baga. What is it? Okay, now I'm getting you. You just went mute. Yeah, I need to do something here. I don't know what's wrong with this one system here. I really have to work on it. So, I got into the story, yeah, in the Daily Observer. Okay. Uh, I got into two of the bank's employees. Andrea Duba, a female accountant, account office of the bank assigned to uh, the account held by the Salifs and Genesis David head of operations uh, they claim that uh, were both forwarded to the court on, on the alleged commission of the theft of property, forgery and consummation of crime and conspiracy both defendants David and Duba were later released after the lawyers filed an unspecified amount of bill to the court. So two of the bank's employees have been prosecuted. Yep. For theft of property, forgery, and um, uh, consummation of crime and criminal conspiracy. 
The contentious issue came about during the investigation of defendants David Nduba, both accusing the wife of Mr. of Mr. Charles Salif of being the one behind the withdrawal of the money from the bank. A claim Mr. Salif has so far denied. Now Charles Salif's wife has said she did not withdraw these funds. Okay. Well, no, she said she did not. And so the bank has to prove that she did. In his written statement, David explained, this is Genesis David, the head of uh, something at the, at, the, at the bank. He explained that he is clothed with a responsibility to supervise tellers at the Sinker branch and admitted that he approved all of the slips that were used as source documents to allow withdrawals from Charles Salif's account at the bank. So the guy said, yeah, all the papers came, all the slips for withdrawal. I supervise the tellers. And so, yes, I sign off on all of them. In his verbal statement, the document quoted defendant David saying that Mrs. Surley visited the bank on March 4, 2019 and was ushered into the office of the bank's executives before he, Genesis, approved the withdrawal slip for the payment of 100,000 US dollars to Andrea Duba from one of Mr. Charles Selly's accounts and was and the cash was turned over to her in his Davis presence. So they're claiming to give the money to Charles Selly's wife. The Charles Selly's wife was the one who would draw the phone, but Charles Selly's wife is denying it, why guy? <laughs> Yeah, but why I shouldn't the bank have a system in place that can prove that she was the one? Don't they have CCTV camera? Do, does the bank not have a CCTV system in place? I mean, whichever office they took her in to withdraw this these funds and give to her, they must have they, they must have CCTV footage. So are they saying? They have no video footage to prove this woman wrong. To say, hey, you came here, we gave you this money. You, you, you got the girl saying, you ain't giving me money. You ain't giving me no money. I mean, for Christ, for Christ's sake, uh, Baka, this is not a Susu club. This is a bank. Yeah, but Costa, if you're going to do a return, they have a slip. They have three different slips. One for you, one for the bank, and one they special just for, you know, record between the both uh, parties. So I don't know if they don't have that particular receipts. That's the question. I'm sure they have them. But I can, even more than that, they should have CCTV in place. Something might be wrong yet. Yes. Charles Salih's wife might have gone for this money. She, 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 she might be denying it. And and this, according to them, this is this happened when Charles Salih was in jail. So this guy must have might, might, I'm not saying she did. It is possible she went to the bank when Charles Ali was in jail. Somebody took her signature. You will be careful with the signature thing here. Because anybody can forge any signature. So you will be careful with the signature part. My concern is the one thing that can solve the whole case. CCTV. You know they're dead. They claim that the lady went to the bank on the 4th of March 2019 and withdrew. She went into the office of the bank executives. You mean in okay. these offices? You have no CCTV footage anywhere to show that this woman went there and took out money. You have no cameras. I mean, GT Bank, 13th Street, Sinker. You have no cameras installed. Yeah, they are here office. Exactly, Bucket. Exactly. You have no cameras? So the guy said, you ain't give me no money. You ain't give me no money. Now, let's read for that. According to them, she visited the bank again, October 29, 2019. And submitted um, another check for 88,000 US dollars. Please, uh, please touch that your microphone a bit. You are uh, coming in. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm getting you now. Yeah, but okay. it looks like like I told you, I got new cables, but it looks like I need to make adjustments. Yeah, maybe you know while we're taking calls, I will try to 
or change the position? I'm trying to uh, see if he's having some problem from his end. Can you hear me, Boga? Okay, now I'm getting you faster. Oh God, this is not this is not good. This is not good. No, it's oh. good now. It's good now. Go ahead. Yeah, but the next time it happens, I have to remove this new cable and put the old one back. Okay. Yeah, this is not good. I mean, this is not good. So, on the 29th of October 2019, they said she went back to the bank and she took out 88,000 US dollars from her husband's, from their joint account. $88,000. Now, yeah. Now, the record also claims that Duba told the investigation that she was the account officer to Mr. Charles' account as well as the, the guest house they owned together. Duba further claimed that Mrs. Ali was one of the persons to whom she, Duba, turned over the cash and that the cash was withdrawn from Mr. Charles Ali's account based upon the instruction from Mrs. Ali. In her statement, the record claimed that Mrs. Ali and her husband are signatories to the Bojellin, uh, Bojellini Guest House Incorporated account meeting at the GT Bank. Mr. Sully claimed that in 2017, she opened a Liberian dollar account and a USD account at the GT Bank. But when the government decided to freeze her husband's account in reference to the alleged $16, million, $16 billion, Andrea Duba called her and advised her that she must withdraw her cash and take it home so that the government does not seize their monies. Oh! Hmm. So, the, so, Charles Sully's wife is claiming that their account officer, Andrea Duba, I think I know Andrea, I think I know her, told her when her husband was arrested, oh, you better can't take your money out of their account before the government frees up your money. Now, this is Charles Selim's wife's word against the account officer's word, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can't stand on her word. Because something features somewhere, Bwaka. Something happens somewhere. Something happened. Either Charles and his wife took the money out of the account because her husband was in jail and she figured perhaps he was not going to come out or the bank tellers were that super, super, super brave to take the money out. But hey, where do I stand? The only way that can, this thing can be proved or you can prove this situation and lay this matter the rest is unless is when you present the CCTV footage. Present a CCTV footage. Let's go further. She says she fell in a withdrawal slip authorizing $90,000 US from her account. And she later deposited the money in another account bearing her husband's, her brother's name, Boema Kona. So she put money in her brother's account. Boy, my corner, according to the thing here. She further narrated that in July 20, 2019, she instructed her brother to withdraw the amount of 40000 from this account, and a withdrawal slip was delivered to Andrea Duba, who executed the withdrawal, and she received the money through the defendant David, and 50000 remained in her account bearing her brother's name. She further claimed that she and her brother did not transact any business within their respective accounts until May 26, 2020, when they withdrew all of their monies, both Liberian and US dollars. In reference to the, she was the only secretary and then she and the husband, the parents was all the rising like, oh. Well folks, there you have it. She said the $88,000 that were taken out of the account, she said it was not signed by them. And the, and the signature F Donzo affixed on the check was not written by her. Hmm. F Donzo. That was a signature written on the check according to her. Woo. She also, this is Charles Elise Webber. She said she did not receive $100,000 on March for 2020. She said it is not true. So what happened to the money in Charles Elise's account? A lot of freaking money. And I'm wondering how the hell did, did he earn all that money? As a mere employee at Central Bank, I mean, not a mere employee, but deputy governor for operations still. That's too much money for him, okay? Mm -hmm. But the point is, the point is, okay, how did he have or, or come by all that money in cash? 
Hard cold cash. Over a million dollars in one bank account, boy. Yeah. Over like a million dollars in cash. Like you say, on a CCTV camera, because she claiming that she and her husband only visited the bank one time, which was on November 2nd. Yeah. So now they got to prove her wrong. Yeah. And the customer is saying, I didn't take out the money. So the bank has to have a way to prove that the customer took out the money, right? Yeah. The bank has to protect itself. The customer says she didn't take the money. The bank has to prove that the customer took the money. How does the bank do that? The bank has to adduce evidence. CCTV. Mm -hmm. Does the bank not have cameras installed in certain places where they can prove on the particular dates mentioned that this lady, Mrs. Sirleaf, went in and we and 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 and, and, and had these and made these huge withdrawals? The bank has to prove it, Walker. The bank has to prove it. <laughs> in this case, yeah, that the bank in the hot in the hot water, Walker. Yeah. The bank has to prove that their customer is lying. They have to prove that Mrs. Sirleaf is lying. If the bank cannot prove it, the bank is going to be in trouble. Now, where did this woman sit for you to bring this money out? So I've, I, I use a Titan Street location multiple times. I, I use it all the time. In fact, when I'm in Liberia, it is the only GT bank place that I use for, say, 99% of the time. That's where I go. GT Bank, Titan Street, Sinko. I'm very familiar with that place. I'm familiar with a lot of the staff there. Now, pray tell me, if this woman went there to receive and she, and she received hundreds of thousands of dollars, I, I, damn it, Jesus Christ. I hope the gang take the money and go hide it because her husband was in jail. And he said, oh, and maybe he will not come outside or, or maybe, I don't know. Or I hope the baby will see the money. So right now it's hard to tell, Waka. Yeah. The bank has to prove that Mrs. Sirleaf had made these withdrawals while her husband was in jail. That the bank business, that our business, that the bank business. Now, poor guy, Orange, Orange Liberia has issued a statement. We're going to read this statement for the Liberian people. And the Liberian people need to brace themselves for what might happen. Orange Liberia has issued this statement. Let me read it for you all, folks. Now, you all remember that sometime last week, I believe it was on Friday, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the government of Liberia through the LTA. Yeah. Basically saying in this ruling that the LTA has the authority to levy surcharges or to increase the prices of voice calls and data calls, making it more expensive for you to use an internet service on your cell phone, making it more expensive for you to make phone calls, period. That's what they call voice and data. Because the government wants to increase the price or the prices. Now, Orange had said that they would be issuing a statement. True to their promise, they did issue a statement yesterday and the statement is there. What's today's date, Walker? The 9th? Yeah. The so Orange issued a statement on Monday. I'm sorry. The statement was actually put out on Monday, the 7th of September. I have the statement here. The statement says something that I had expected it would say. Essentially, the ruling has been made. And so we are going to issue, we are going to do as the government tells us to do. That's essentially what Orange says. <laughs> now, this is interesting. It is very, very interesting. My uncle Jeremiah Walker used to say, interesting. It is very interesting what's happening. Orange lost the case against the government. Orange was fighting for the customers, fighting for the Liberian people. But they lost the case. The Supreme Court said, LTA may increase it any amount they like. So bring going give a damn. So this is what Oran said in the press release put out on the 7th of September 2020. The title of this press release is 
Orange prepares to implement LTA imposed surcharges. I like the title. Orange prepares to implement LTA imposed surcharges. That means Orange said, look, anything you tell to do will do it. Yes, I'm going to kill it. 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 Now, Orange is saying, let me read the press release for you. In a wake of Thursday, September 3rd ruling from Liberia's Supreme Court against Orange Liberia, the company says it takes note of the decision and will now execute surcharges on mobile, on voice, and data services. Orange said, and the court now rule. The court finished ruling. So we will go ahead and do exactly what the LTA wants us to do. Let me read for you. In February 2019, the Liberia Telecommunications Authority, LTA, released LTA order number 0016-02-25-19. This order was implemented on September in September 2019 and led to the cancellation of the popular three days free calls. The order mandated that within six months of passage, there would be another automatic imposition, automatic imposition of surcharges of 0 0.008 uh, cents per minute on voice on net and 0 0.00065 per a cent per megabyte or 0 0.6656 per minute I mean per, uh, uh, per second on uh, uh, this this is on gigabyte Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're going to increase every, every everything. That's essentially what it is. Orange decided, in the best interest of his customers and the assets in Liberia, to challenge LTA at the Civil Law Court on the introduction of mobile voice, on net, and data surcharges in the new LTA order. Orange believes that the that mobile and data prices, price increases, I'm sorry, have a negative impact on its customers as well as its operations in Liberia. After the ruling of the Civil Law Court, six judicial circuit, Monterey County, in the petition for judicial review, it filed against the LTA. Orange appealed the ruling to the Honorable Supreme Court of the Republic of Liberia. With a ruling from the Supreme Court, GSM companies will now await a date from the LTA to commence the imposition of the additional surcharges and increase accordingly the prices of voice and data services. Hmm. All right. I will put that phone down and we'll discuss this matter. Fellow librarians, Orange is basically saying, we lost our battle in the courts against the government to try to stop them from making it nearly impossible for most impoverished, suffering Liberian people from using their cell phones. Orange is saying, we talk of this advocacy for you, our customers, because we believe that this these increases would have a very bad impact on you. Negative impact. So we went to court because of you. That's what Orange is saying. But Orange is now saying, now that we've lost the case in the Supreme Court, we now stand at the guillotine awaiting the instructions of the hangman. The LTA is the hangman here. They will decide whatever they want to do, we will follow. Whatever date they gave us to, to levy these new charges or to begin to execute this new mandate, we will carry out that mandate unquestionably. 
So fellow Liberians, prepare yourselves. You are about to pay even more for data and for voice calls. It is not going to be easy at all. Because Orange is saying, we lost the battle. We're not going to fight anymore. There's no way we can fight anymore. We're going to have to do it. Whether we like it or not. It is up to the government. The government is going to decide. Now I told you. The fundamental reason why the government wants to do this. Is not because they want to make money. Because they will not make money. You cannot squeeze water out of rock. Mm -hmm. The people don't have money. If, some, if, if a pair of shoes used to be sold for 100 US dollars. That same pair of shoes now. The price goes up. To 200 US dollars. Those who like it but cannot afford it are not going to buy it. So, you're not going to sell more of the shoes. You're going to sell less of the shoes. Because people might like it, but they just can't afford it. So, they're not going to bother to try to buy it. Yeah. If you increase the price of data where people cannot afford it, what do you think they're going to do? Mr. Weir, they're not going to be able to afford it. So, they're not, they're not going to be able to use their phones. Or they're not going to be able to put data and credit in their phones as much as they currently do because they are struggling, they are suffering. They've got other things to but, do. But, but, but let me just tell you this. Since uh, they took away the three-day free course, Liberian has, not, you know, the typical Liberian now have, the, the, the company, Orange, Lone Star, have made it possible that you can buy 10 minutes Five million to just to make a call. That's how they have done it. And people have gotten adjusted to that, Waka. People have getting adjusted to that because cost that now buying two dollar, you have to pay two hundred and ten dollar or two hundred and twenty Liberian dollar for just a dollar. So what they can do now, they pass around with a pass it to me say five million calls, ten million calls, Liberian pay twenty dollar uh, uh, twenty five, thirty, fifty, or what all depends on how many meanings you want. So that just why now. Library have adjusted themselves too. Yeah. You know, with, with another sort of charge or another price again. <laughs> yeah. We better embrace ourselves or able to. Exactly. But the COP did something the last time. We issued a statement. We did a we had a press conference. We told the government not to do it. And the government was denying why the case was in court. They said that they were not planning to increase it. And they're going to do it. They want to do it. It's up to the Liberian people. It's up to you. People are suffering. Now is not the time to do this to the Liberian people. When they are suffering. This is wickedness. They essentially want to... It, you see, they say they want to do it for revenue generation purposes. It cannot be for revenue generation purposes. Because if I cannot afford something, I will not try to buy it. So if you say you're okay to press up thinking that I'm going to spend more money on it, you're lying. Baka, I don't have it. I cannot afford it. So you think when you increase the price that all maybe will go buy it? I will not buy it because I cannot afford it, Baka. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what I want it or not. If the price of data goes up and people cannot afford it, they will not bother to buy it when they cannot afford it. So you will still not see the desired results. People will just get they will just get frustrated and put their phones down or not put data in their phones. So you will still lose money. You will not make that money you think you will make. Yeah, the company begin to lose customers and the uh, company will not be paying much tax again to government. People will just get frustrated and not buy data and voice calls as much as they used to. And the companies will realize that the revenues will fall. Yeah. Because people say, oh, when I afford, let me put a damn phone down. <laughs> but so, so the government strategy, Boaga, is not, is not to raise revenue where people are broke and cannot afford and are suffering in the country. That is not their strategy. This is not a revenue generation strategy. You know what strategy it is? It is a strategy to silence the people. The internet. The internet. You've got 
hundreds of thousands or at least a million or two million Liberians online, okay? In Liberia and around the world. People get news from the internet. People spread things on the a, on a internet. We know how George React complains all the time about social media. Their strategy is to silence people. They want to have as few people as possible on the internet than currently. They don't want that many people on out all day attacking George Weah, criticizing him, making mockery of him. They don't want that. Their strategy is to silence you. Their strategy is not to raise money. They know you don't have money. They know when they increase the prices of voice calls and data, you're not going to be able to afford to pay because you don't have it. So their strategy is very simple. We can silence these people by making it prohibitively expensive for them to use their, their data or the internet and for them to be able to make phone calls. That is their strategy. Now, they do not care what it does to you. All they want to do is to just ensure that you're not online. Now, as I said, and I'm going to reiterate, this is going to be up to you, the Liberian people, to decide what this happens. Now, is this government going to do that? And this is this is very, 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 very unpopular. Right across the aisle. It doesn't matter whether you are a sedition. Now, mind you, to you, seditions, the government is not going to be giving you special rate. No. Nope. They're not going to increase the data for United Party people or ANC people or ALP people and not increase yours. They're going to increase data right across the board indiscriminately. Everyone is going to be paying way more for data and for voice calls than they currently do. And when that happens, we all are going to be in trouble. You are going to be you are going to be in trouble. It's going to be very, very difficult. So what the government wants to do, the government doesn't want you to be able to be online as much as you currently are. They want limited online presence, limited on online activity where people can go on live and watch other people's live videos and post things about the government. And they don't want you watching these things. They, they don't want these things. So that's why they try. This is the strategy to silence you. Now, it is up to you, the people, to accept to be silenced. It is up to you. Up to you. That's who is up to you. You and nobody else. Now, let's move on to another matter. Mm -hmm. A very humiliating matter. An extremely, an extremely humiliating, defacing situation. And what is that? Liberia, under George Weah, has failed to pay its dues to the African Union, of which we are a founding member. In fact, the very first meeting that led to the formation of the, of the Organization of African Unity, the OAU, whose name was later changed to the African Union, was held in Saniquili, Nimba County. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think that meeting was held in 1957. In Saniquili, yeah, that is where the very first meeting of the African Union was held. Ahmed Seko Touré of Guinea, Philly Hoover Boy of the Ivory Coast and President William V. Stockman hosted the meeting. Now, the African Union, it's a very, it's the biggest organization in Africa for African countries. Liberia has been kicked aside. Our membership status has been demoted. Our membership status has been degraded from four member with four rights, including voting rights, participation rights, to an observer. Hello, folks. Liberia mm -hmm. is now an observer of the African Union. We are no longer a full-fledged member enjoying all rights and privileges, including voting rights, discussion rights, and other rights. Because Georgia has failed to pay our dues. $1.6 million in dues. He has refused to pay. This is so shameful. It is so embarrassing. I mean, even for seditious, I would presume. You 
were one of the founders of this organization. Today, we have been kicked to the curb as an observer. If we went to an African Union event right now, you know how they would treat us? We would not be given a seat to sit among the others, to discuss with them, to debate issues, and to, to vote. vote. Yeah. We would not. Mm -hmm. If we went to an African Union meeting right now, we would not be allowed to sit in, participate in discussions, and ultimately cast a ballot. Because yeah. our membership status has been downgraded from full member to observer. What? This is what George Weah has done to us. Now, $1.6 million? Is that what we cannot pay? This is the accumulation. It's not just one time you should pay this money. This is, a, this is an accumulation of years of non-payment of membership dues. Years of non-payment accumulated to $1.6 million. This is terribly sad and embarrassing. The same thing with, the, with Interpol. The International Police Organization of which Liberia was a member. Liberia, you know when I left Liberia and the government was planning, they were, Serena Silva was saying they were going to get Interpol to arrest me in a foreign country and send me back. A friend of mine who used to work at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said to me, because I don't even worry. It's not possible. Because the government owes Interpol a lot of money. I think at the time he said we were owing Interpol around just, just about a million dollars in membership dues that we hadn't paid. Therefore, Liberia could not make any request of Interpol to arrest anybody. Can you imagine that, Boga? Interpol would not grant or even give a moment's notice or consideration to a request from Liberia to do something as arresting somebody for them abroad. They would not do it because we owe Interpol almost a million dollars in membership deals that we have not paid. We owe the African Union $1.6 million. I don't know about ECOWAS. I wouldn't be surprised if we owe ECOWAS too. But this is a disgrace for our country. An organization that we help create or found has today kicked us to the curb downgraded us from a full-fledged member where all of the rights and privileges that attend such full membership to now an observer status. It is a disgrace. And this happened on George Weah's watch. It is shameful. It is something that should make us all sad. Not only that, there's another thing that it demonstrates. Irresponsibility. The government is very irresponsible. Because to allow yourself to be treated in such a manner, to not honor your international obligations, demonstrates what an irresponsible government you are. That's what it does. And this is unacceptable. On the issue of the data, it's up to the Liberian people. The COP will have a meeting about this and we'll discuss it and we, and we want to take action. Let me say this. As chairman of the Council of Patriots, I can tell you this much. We will take action. And for our action, we're not going to court. The matter has already been adjudicated in the courts. The LTA has been acknowledged or recognized as having full authority to levy surcharges. So we're not going to waste our time to go to court. We will take our situation on the streets if, if we must. The COP will review this matter of the surcharge or the plan to levy surcharges and we will act appropriately and accordingly because we know what this will do. The people need lead leadership. That is why the COP is in existence. I'm not going to sit here and say let the people stand up by themselves and fight by themselves. The people always need leadership. Had we not stood up on June 7 or the months before June 7, had I not created the COP in April of last year and others joined me to form it, structure it, and we mobilize and call the protest, the protest will not have been successful because people need leadership. 
They need somebody to lead the way. This is the way it works. So we're saying, essentially, that the COP is going to lead on, on this matter as we did the last time round. We will review the situation. As chairman of the COP, I will call a meeting to discuss this matter on Saturday of this week. We will discuss it, and we will issue a statement on this issue of the government's plan to levy surcharges on data and voice, thereby making it nearly impossible for a great many of our brothers and sisters in Liberia to be able to afford to use the internet on their phones and to make voice calls. Currently, as we all know, things are very, very bad in the country. The economic data, the economic statistics are grim and gloomy and, 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 and it's a doomsday thing. And, and the last thing you want to do is to exacerbate that to exacerbate the already excruciating economic woeful troubles that people are faced with to make it worse. You want to take away their data? You want to take away their phones? This is unacceptable. The COP will act. We will issue a statement on this matter and we will be prepared to take it to the streets of Monrovia and other capital cities across the country. That is what we are going to be, we are going to have to do. We dare the government if the government decides, our position on, on the matter has not changed, essentially. Our statement, which we will put out after our meeting on Saturday, Saturday, will only be to reinforce what we had already said. And what we've already said on the matter is that the government must not, should not consider levying new surcharges. As it is, the people are suffering. And so we would simply be re-emphasizing, reaffirming our commitment to that warning that we issued to the government. If you dare do this, we will go on the streets of Monrovia. We will go on the streets of Banga. We will go on the streets of Ganta. If you take us for granted, try it and see what we're going to do. And let's see what the seditions and other passive Liberians who don't care often only complain and complain would not join us and would not be supportive of this. Now everybody does not attend protests. We, we, we know that all over the world. Yeah. When you had the rape protest, no, everybody didn't attend, but people supported it. People who didn't attend supported it because it, it was the right thing to do. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We will issue a position very, very soon on this particular subject, and we will be acting. Now, let's move on to something else before we go to the phone lines. I want to congratulate Mr. Muhammad Ali, the founding, a founding executive founding Secretary General of the Council of Patriots on his election yesterday as Secretary General of the United Party. I'm very happy for Brother Mo Ali. We are all happy in the COP. Mo Ali is one of us. He worked with us. The history of the COP cannot be written or could not be written without Mo Ali's name and the very critical role he played in the history of our movement, the COP. COP. So we are proud. We are proud of Mo Ali, the rank and file of the COP, the national leadership, the members around the world, in Liberia. We're very proud. Mo Ali had to resign his position as Secretary General of the COP, which precipitated or necessitated us having bringing on board Mr. Mobake Yobo, an equally competent, hardworking, pit, 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 patriotic Liberian to fill that position as Secretary General. And so we're very happy that yesterday Mo Ali won the, the election. We had endorsed him, we had campaigned for him. One of the things Mo Ali's main rival, Emma Stuer, was saying, and by the way, Emma Stuer, I want to say you know, congratulations for participating. But of course, we knew that our brother Mo Ali would win. One of the things Emma Stuart used to say on Facebook is that Mo Ali would lose to him primarily because Mo Ali was an executive official of the C of, of the COP. I don't know where Emma Stuart came from with that, that the COP is unpopular within the United Party. Therefore, because Mo Ali is Secretary General of the COP, Mo Ali would lose. And he, Amos Twer, would beat Mo, Mo Ali. But my boy, y'all please go ask Amos Twer, has Mo Ali lost? 
And, and yesterday I watched the, the ceremony, the convention at the headquarters. When Mo Ali stood up there, he said, one of the things he said as his credentials, why he was qualified to be Secretary General, he said, I am a founding member executive of the COP. I, 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 I serve as Secretary General and I recently resigned my position and I'm now a member of the Advisory Council. And guess what? Mm. The delegates were there listening. If they were unimpressed, if they are against the COP, they, what you know? What made Emma Swan to think that the COP is unpopular in the yeah. United Party? And look, what made that whole thing away? Then he was telling the people, "Oh, Mo Ali is involved with COP. The COP is not an enemy of the United Party. If anything, the COP and the United Party are partners." Are we not partners with the CPP? We are. Is the CPP not a member of the of the, the United Party? Not a member of the CPP. So it must have made a very bad calculation, telling the delegates that Mo Ali was a COP man. Therefore, they should not vote for Mo Ali. It was the mistake that it must have made because the, the delegates were enthusiastic, were happy to hear that Mo Ali is one of the people who played a pivotal role in the historic peaceful June 7 pro pro protest. So it played in most favor to talk about his history in the COP. It did. And Mo Ali is now the Secretary General of the former ruling party, the Unity Party. Also, we endorsed Brother Amin Mudad. Amin Mudad is not a politician, not the traditional type. He's a businessman. He comes to politics with vast experience in business. He's not a political novice to say no, but he has not been actively involved in politics. But that played out very well for him. We brought him on this show. We campaigned for him. And Brother Amin Muda won yesterday by a landslide as the chairman of the Unity Party. There were 48 votes up for grabs. Of the 48 votes, Amin Muda picked up 34 of them. Kamina Wizard, Medina Wizard's wife, as the husband. Kamina Wizard, in, in that marriage, the roles are reversed. Yes, Kamina Wizard may be a, the male, we should make him the husband, but in actuality, he is the wife and Medina, and Medina is the husband. So the roles are reversed in that marriage. Kamina Wizard is Medina's poodle, she uses him as she sees fit. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf's candidate for chairman of UP was coming in with Coming in with got eight votes. Hello? Coming in with her. Medina Wizard's wife picked up eight votes. Eight. I mean, would have got 38. I mean, 34. Coming in with got eight. But a judge was not. Oh, man, was not very badly. I think coming in with got eight. John, John was not got zero votes. Boy, yeah, <laughs> John always not got zero votes. C, I wait, need CB Bashel, eh? CB Bashel, that representative. I think he picked up six or eight votes. So, Amin Muda destroyed them. Ellen Johnson Sally's candidate for chairman of UP got eight votes. Number eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Medina Wizard's wife. Now, for senior vice chair for administration, Daba Vapila won. I'm happy Daba won. Because at least they have one woman in key national leadership of the party. Now, I would not have been, I would have been equally pleased had Giddings, Rolling Giddings, uh, Rolling Giddings won. But at least they needed one woman, man. You know? Yeah. They, they needed a woman in a key position. So Dama Vapila won. She's a senior vice chair. So that's it. Secretary General Mo Ali of the COP. Secretary General of the Unity Party. And uh, Amin Muda, we endorsed him. He won chairman by landslide. Ellen Johnson Ali lost. Let's go to the lines, Baga. Let's take some calls there. Wow. 
And the issue about Jumbo Jabba sentence in the U.S. also. Uh, Jumbo Jabba, you mean a general that was captured? Yeah, his appeal was denied, so he'll be going for 30 years. That's very yeah. good. 30 yeah. years, huh, man? <laughs> and then, you know, all of these things just send a message to those that are in power now. You have to be very careful, totally careful. Um, then take some calls on 0770-102-102-0886-010383-0555-102-102 and the WhatsApp number is plus 231-888-624171. Uh, don't take Noah Zahu gives it. Noah, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Welcome, bro. Yeah, come on and thank you, our leader. Morning, Noah. Our fellow COP supporters, including our supporters from the CPP in the diaspora. My name is Noah Zawg, and I'm coming this morning from Chippewa to Madhya Pradesh, Ah, Federal, I want to thank the COP officials for the endorsement. Uh, for our candidate, Amin Muda, that won. And we knew we would have won because we we were confident uh, with the level of that we we did. And I, I must tell you, I, my friend and brother who I supported for the secretary general position, if he ever said that the reason more Ali wouldn't have won because more Ali the the U P is very unpopular in the U P that 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 joke. As one of the funniest things and one of the most wrong things that I ever said because the COP is even popular in the UP than any of the four collaborating political parties. I speaking to you right now, the COP is my second name. Saying that if the COP was a political institution, but we are a question of being an advocate group to appeal to it a civil rights I champion and 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 and, and uh, not being compromised. I would have made the COP my better political name. But our interest is not for political purpose. So the COP will be my second thing. So if anyone who says the COP is more popular in the UP, that means that it's got a weak thing. Because it is the, UP, the, the COP is more popular in the UP than any other popular in the political party. As I conclude, I'll tell you now. You see, many of you, you now know why some of us decided to expose the real led government in their attempt to have us got to uh, market the interest of the country. 1.6 million dollars cannot be paid for Liberia to maintain her seat and her personal rights at the seat of the AU that Liberia is the only member of. So millions of dollars have been teachers to buy people and us over eating to see how they can market the interest of the country. Do you know how many people are just spent right now? You know how they're spending them right now to buy people over there? But we cannot uh, pay our due to maintain our seat at the AU. I mean, we will continue to fight these people out of jail in front of us. And why I did, if I had an opportunity, I would do more than what I did. I have no regret for what I've done. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, so much, Noah. Let's take more calls there. The government of Liberia now has the ball in its court to levy new surcharges to make it more expensive for you to make phone calls, to make it more expensive for those of you in Liberia to go on the internet, to browse, to do your schoolwork and all and all that kind of stuff, especially in the face of a pandemic where many people have moved online. A lot of things are being done online today, more so than ever before because of the pandemic. This is when the government decides to increase, to make it more expensive to go online. This is wickedness. And so the, the COP is, 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 it already has a position on, on, on this. We're simply going to be reinforcing our position. If the government attempts to do this, we will go on to, we, we, we will get out on the streets, we'll call a very mass nationwide protest. That's what we're going to do. It's very simple, extremely simple. We're not going to go discuss some, something new. We, we're, we're just going to go to reaffirm our position on it. Let's, let's go back to the lines and let's take more calls there. All right. 
Let me take this person. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, you may call him. Okay, you are welcome. Hey guys, you this morning. We're doing good. Okay, I'm going to join you for about the pictures of our primary level of Union Party or our convention. But honestly, I want to say that uh, Evo Sword and uh, Wisdom, they are the bad guy. The only thing I don't want to actually let them understand that this duty that the convention should not be the cause of the actually thinking of why. We need to pull the support in the middle of strong giants. There's a need to try to understand that uh, the union of CTP must be considered first in the defense of this republic. And you guys' expertise are having needed beyond that and top four. We are just looking for a country that is considered a funding member of the African Union to T4 on legal with 1.6 million publications as a chief president. In this sense, I mean, it's so much of a kind of a troubling mind that anybody who is actually nationalist will have to sit and think twice on the thing. What is the cause? Should there be an act of responsibility? There's a name that actually recalls our own perception for this nation. The government, especially we are, I'm taking you fight. Don't allow our own character that we are being called through of time. As a country, I become instrumental in the establishment of peace of all nations. Funding not all the treaties around the world to become fairly illegal with due payment obligation of 1.6 million. I thank you, Mr. President, for the reaching and we with this obligation. Be very fast and soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bibara Samukai. Uh, 0770-102-102 are the lines that you can call and uh, you'll be live. The WhatsApp number is plus 231-888-624171. Now take another person on this line. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know where you calling from? I think that people can account. The religious, the pastor, the report, but you are also asking chairman for consignment united for the city of Senator DeLong. And I'm calling you from Banaljo this morning. My hero, good morning, the United States of America. Morning, morning to our religious advisor. Okay. No, my English are saying, oh, <laughs> before the, the internet food body were running behind you, right? Why would we find that like, they did meet before they were getting you back to like, we were a black people? Well, you know, let me say this, you are a patriot. Well, sometimes, sometimes I can wonder where Barbie that look. Just forget about that, right? But then, if you are a patriot, we join you in a fight. Look, and like, we sat down again, the three days were taken away. We talk and nothing came from our right? Nothing. But so true, we don't want to say and allow this man to pull us out of our nose. The religion advisor, uh, <laughs> and that's it. The phone lines are still open. You can keep your calls coming in on the uh, uh, topic on the discussion. Let's take this person. Good morning. Good morning, Baba, and good morning to the people's settler leader. Critical. Thank you. Thank you. We live long, and we don't live long, and all patriotic have live long that are peaceful recognition. This is Mahmoud Kutikos Johnson, the acting chairman of the Mali Health of Justice, the Justice Secretary General of the People's Central Revolutionary Movement, COP Human. First of all, let me say thank you, Mr. Kamala, and thank you to our leader. Leader, you are spoken well. Sorry for the poor quality of my voice. First of all, let me make this very clear. For we within the COP, the People's Movement, we will never and ever be short of data as long as we have our beautiful model to develop in the diaspora. Let me just kind of it clear. Most of the masses that we pay for, talk about tomorrow on Thursday, I will be addressing the nation. I ask for the SSS joint now. We have to make it to my first conference on Thursday. Those of you will be out there and get the government on the nation to address when it comes to data press call. Are you kidding me? 
people in hospital, people who have accidents, people who have wasted jobs, people who have been in business and that. We can deliver a cancer to start the call of family. So for the accounting of that information, you will look at that and increase the data of one stop. I think it is unacceptable. We will be on time for our leader to speak, but before then, the independent, not a vote of the week, come from our test. We will test the men, the test the men. I'm talking to the ball. We start it. Can't go to the plan. We are going to go out of memory. If the government does not think in the record, money will do the government for our best people. We have no authority in that because the more they can work data, we have no. So you should sit and allow the market to suffer. We will revert to the forest to take the government and get back to our place and do the government. Thank you. Thank you. We have done the same thing. All right. Thank you so much, Momo the Critical Johnson. We're still taking your calls on the phone number. Just keep it coming in wherever you are. And the WhatsApp number is also active plus 231 888 The local lines are 0770 102 102 0 5 So um, there's no call yet, cause so. We still anticipate them. Yeah, Baga, I'm trying to adjust something here. So just keep talking. Okay. All right. So um, keep your calls coming in as we take them um, on the foreign line. So let's take this person here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Baga. Yeah, good morning. Anyone yeah, calling from? I'm Sam Phil. I'm calling from Bradford. Welcome, Sam. Oh, thank you, Baga. Well, all play yesterday because after the election and uh, those who won, the defeated came were all the crap congratulated those that won. And I think that's a very, very good sign of unity and leadership. So I appreciate them because I think um, all of them have one goal and that is making little goals. So I think this is the time that we all have to work together and make sure that things work properly, the unity party for the sake of TPP. I just want to thank you today. All right, thank you. Let's take uh, Mohammed John, Mohammed, uh, Connor. Be well, good morning. Good morning, Bokan, and good morning to Miro uh, Heaven Pepe Mosa. My name is Mohammed S. Connor, and I'm from for Johnsonville. Welcome. Thank you. So we are home. And we're going to live in you at our short time. On GFF Public in La, we'll take the street. Hey, you know, that's how I get me to your media, and I don't have that video, you want to make it. We are not going to tell that nonsense. So the idiot want to change the people. All the money you have stolen. That was not sufficient for you that the people, the people have been wanting for us. Because we, when I tell you what we are, what we are, what we are, we are, uh, 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 we are, what we are angry, we go on social media at least to ease up what they want on us. Facebook will uh, release our own face, the reason first. When the idiot trying to tell us yes indeed, we cannot make use of social media. The way they tell us that joke, we are joking. Therefore. Therefore, we have a family for little changing place at the view level that we will not take the thing. So yesterday, I started, I will start a call for a meeting. And the matter for Johnson we meet, we already created our own chat room. We're going to meet today at our, at our headquarters, to, at, at, at our office, I mean. We will be there until we start it down, play, waiting for Saturday, ready for little help, ready for Costa. We can't allow that to happen. We are going to have to be on food. That's too bad that take all our money go to the Jamaica Resort. So you don't sell it back, all that money is not selling to Jackie and Pia. Let's go for that money. The money is still to Jackie and Pia. Let me sell a private check. So you at least can, you can pay the full money. So you can sell the money power and pay you. But that money is the day you want to sell it for 
I just made some adjustments down there on my mixer board. I hope yeah. it helps. Uh, what I did basically, I just changed the, uh, the the different areas where I had them. I put the audio jacks in different outlets. So let's see how it uh, plays out. I hope it's going to improve it. But so as I was saying, the issue with data is so is so so essential. Uh, it is very important. Take for example, the number of people we used to have watching the live video. I mean, easily in the morning, uh, 2,000, 1,600, 1,500. And then, of course, uh, many, many thousands will watch a little, but it's not the same. I mean, other talk shows, they have 50 views, 100 views, 25 views on social media. And, and you know, I mean, we, we're grateful that we're still in the very high numbers, but that's not what it used to be because times are hard and and when times are hard people spend less on things that are that are not what recharging their phones is very essential to them but it's not as essential as feeding themselves okay mm -hmm. it's not essential as say sending your kids to the hospital when they get sick and there are lots of other things people have to do and so people are catching help and so for the government to be doing something like this or to be even considering doing this in the face of this crisis is just wickedness. It's unacceptable. And, and that is why um, we will not sit by and let it happen, you know? And so we're gonna issue a statement uh, this weekend to just let the government know that we in the Council of Patriots are not gonna let them do this and get away with it because the people of Liberia are suffering enough. Somebody sent me something here, Boga. Let me just go to it. Uh, our economic indicators are getting worse. Things are getting worse in the country economically. All right, I have it. So the percentage increase in gross national income per capita from 2018 to 2019 from the Sanusi Research and Consultant, and this is September 6, 2020. Liberia is on this list, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, hold on. Our economy is shrinking. Things are looking bad. Very, 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 very bad. We are way at the bottom of this. This is extremely bad. The other countries are doing better. I mean, look at Benin. Benin looks good. I mean, Benin is doing good. The GNP, the gross national income, is increasing. I mean, look at the graph. I'm looking at the graph. Burkina Faso, it's not so bad. The country that's doing the, the very best on this list is Niger. Niger is the best on this list. Liberia, we're in the opposite. We're the only country, we're in the negative. Waka. We are in the negative. Our gross national income is our GNI is in the negative. We are the only one. How many countries are there on this list? Benin, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, the Ivory Coast, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. We are the only country of how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, about 13, 14 countries. We're the only one of 13, uh, between 13 and 14 countries. We're the only one. We are in the negative, Baga. Hello? Yeah. In terms of increase in gross national in income, are we growing? Is our gross national income growing? Are we fetching more money? Are we, are, we are in the negative. Liberia is the only country on a list of 14 African countries. That is in it. That is in the negative. Jesus Christ. Uh, Benin here yeah, is about forty-five percent. It's grown. But damn, this is huge. Forty-five. Ni Ni Niger. 
Oh my God, Niger, Niger is over 50%. Niger is doing very, very well. Uh, let's see what is Ghana doing. Ghana has grown by about 78%. Uh, Guinea Bissau, I mean, Guinea, Guinea Conakry has grown about 16, 16%. But okay, Liberia, we are negative. Let me see. Negative four uh, percent. Hmm. We are in negative. Hello, Bagay. I'm, I'm reading the graph. This is the graph. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send it to you right now. Liberia is negative four percent. Negative. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's take some more call. So, so things are very, very bad. Other countries are growing. They're seeing increases. In the gross national product, the gross domestic product, we on the other hand, we're in the negative. We're in the negative, negative four percent. Jesus Christ! You first have to deplete that negative four percent, okay? Yeah. You have to go from negative four percent to negative zero percent. Then you begin from positive. Positive zero point one, positive zero point two, pass all the way. But we're in negative 0 0.4. Jesus Christ. Where are we going to go? And this is the kind of economy that you want to increase surcharges on data and voice calls in this bad economy? You got to be joking. Let's take a few more calls. Bagai, our time will be up shortly. All right. Let's go back to the phone line and take uh, Noah. Hello. Yeah. What I want to say as it relates to this plan project, by the way, this is Noah's house getting for the second time. This one should not be like ordinary protest where we will go on the street and leave later. I mean, uh, uh, later. This, like you have, you have just announced, should be simultaneously done in most of our major counties and cities across the country. And we must ensure we keep up on time. The meeting we will have on Saturday, uh, we are, it's going to be a full Zoom meeting with that day. And we should strategize. We must be able to do mobilization. Because let me tell you something. The only way that the government will take off for for, 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 for seriousness, or the world at large will know that we are serious when we come out in our numbers. We don't want, we don't want to have more people on the street. Then we can pull out like 10 or 40,000 people on the street in Monrovia. We pull out like 20,000 people in Kakata. We pull out like 50,000 people in Banga. We pull out like 25,000 people on the street in Limba. I tell you for real. The government will be forced to bow to the people. No power is greater than the people's power. The people's power are greater. So I want to say to you, that you don't want to hear what you think about it. We will have to spend any days or weeks in the street, we will do it. And then you please send me that information in my box that you are just reading, so I can read on it very well and send it to and and get myself equipped because we are gearing up for our district to ensure that we bring these people down. When I mean bring them down, it's not a threat by means of instability, but through the logic that the people will listen to and be able to follow the, 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 the language that we preach to help us make, uh, ensure that the country gets uh, a free for the numbers we have. Thank you, Noah. Thank you so much. And like I said, what I did, if I had the opportunity, I would do it again. Thank you. And the source of this information is the World Bank. So Liberia is the worst country among these countries here. And these countries are essentially all the countries in West Africa. Because West Africa, we have about 16 countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a list here. Yeah. So we are the worst in West Africa. The worst. Hello, folks. We are the worst in West Africa. Gross national income. This is terrible, Bwaka. Let's take some more calls. Hmm. Now take Pangomo Kamara. Pangomo, good morning. 
Morning, Papa. All right. But my yes, this is wicked people. Yes, this is wicked people who don't want a people to live better lives. The global war has been offering for all children to live better lives. Better. That this God will put on the show. We get, we expect our business. People expect their business on the on the Just say something quickly. So gross national income, uh, they used to call it GNP before, but now it's called gross national income. GNP was gross national product. Now it's gross national income. Now gross national income is a total amount of money earned by a by a nation's business, uh, the businesses within the country and the people within the country. The total amount of money, just the way it sounds, is gross national income. This is the total income a whole country earns. Okay. So this is all of the money that we earn. It is used to measure and track a nation's wealth from year to year. So, okay, last year, let's say the country earned 1.2 billion. The next year it earns 1.5 billion. And it grew by 300 million. So that's what you call gross national income, the total amount of money. So essentially what this World Bank uh, statistic is saying is that on a list of almost all of the countries in West Africa, Liberia's gross national income, we are the only country in the whole of West Africa, according to this list. We saw our gross national income, that means the total amount of money we earn in the country, we reduce it. It took a fall by 0.4%. Yeah. That's that's what happens. That's what happened. To, about, yeah, 0.4%. Okay. We, we dropped. By 4%, negative 4%, of course. Not even 0 0.4, negative 4%. So instead of growing in gross national income, the amount of money we made as a country, all of the businesses and individuals working in the country, our money dropped by 4%. Okay. 
Yeah. Imagine that, Waka. Imagine that. Benny, their, their income grew by about 45% in Benin, Waka. Niger, their income grew by about 50, 57, 58%. The Ivory Coast, the income grew by 42%. The Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. our income dropped by 4%. We dropped by 4%. Other countries, all the other countries grew. Nigeria grew by what? Nigeria grew by uh, 4%. Nigeria grew by 4%. Togo grew by 7% in income, total income, the country earned. Guinea, Guinea grew by 16%, Waga, 16%. Burkina Faso grew by 19%. Waga, you know what it means? The total income of a country growing by, five, by, 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 by 16%, 14%. That means what, Waga? There's more money in the hands of people in the country, right? Yeah. In our case, we dropped by 4%. Let's go back to the lines. George Mayer is doing a great job. Man, the ball too smart. He's doing a great job. Instead of money coming into our country, money is leaving our pockets and our bank accounts. We are poorer and poorer. Jesus Christ. Let's take more calls. George Mayer working hard. The country are hard. <laughs> Uh, keep your calls coming in. 0770102102. The WhatsApp number is plus 231 And uh, yeah, but the Pagomo, he just got you talking. I just don't know what again. But uh, yeah, we can still take some more calls uh, as we gradually approach our, uh, you know, climaxing time for today. Good morning. Hello, Pagomo. Hello, Let Pagomo finish making a point, Baga, please. No, sir, I'm telling you. Hello, Baga. Wait. Hello. Where are you alive? Baga. Yes, do not call people up there. They may take it off. We might expand one time. They may take it off. You look at the GTB one in the business.
they may be press of data. Maybe the only thing they're waiting for after the election to increase the press of data and call. Because they just want a case against Cellcom. So it's not in the interest of the life, but a lot of people are all in this country. People can even see themselves. Right now, as I'm speaking of what I will be graduating from the AME University. If I tell you up to now, I'm going on the 25th, I have not generated my, my graduation fee yet. People I, I used to go to the help with cash, you go to all and have no money. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. That is very, very true. I mean, people are not helping like before, uh, Edwin Sharif, because people are catching hell. Everybody is catching hell. That yeah. is the that is the truth. Now, yeah. Uh, good morning and welcome. Morning, Baka. Morning, Costa. Morning, Mam Mam Boyo. Who are they? Are they for their job? Who are they for their positions? Uh, what I want to say. They talking what we talking. I said George Black can breathe through his his head. I don't want to use any word. Through his head and his stomach. Do you really know? I don't know. That one thing we got one the poor president. That thing that two of them we got like poor president. Ain't got feeling for the people. So that thing why they pay a hard no about this. I I I got no. I connected me. No about this. They making them get they include the women who are sleeping there. Black men. Yeah, they too scared. In Nigeria, you know what they ever said. The chief. We stay in the street till the he give us up, and if they want what they do, but he like right now they say what they say so that they will go in. Even to to get them set to go in the street, they have so much. They got a language we can't understand. Maybe that's why they go in the street now for the two people that when they protest them is your camp. I tell you, I want you know. So they got them. We sit there and for our head yet because I don't be talking that to a word. Say man, the street can't get us. And it was not for us. All right, my guy. Hold on. Uh, thank you. So, uh, uh, my boy, you know there. So, a little bit of G's, my guy. You know, we got to end it on a little bit of G's. So, Tangi Banto, uh, and normally, you know, we don't talk G's. We don't like talking G's on this show. Uh, <laughs> we ain't no army, my guy. Yeah. We ain't let our like G's. And I take the police G's show here where we can talk G's. But they all don't want. The other G's involve a government official. Eh? So, we got to talk about it. Now, Tanji Banto is a young lady who is believed to be romantically in link. I mean, in fact, she doesn't hide it. I can see it. And you know, and you know, I mean, she can't hide it. Tanji Banto has been attacking Safwa May Gray. The president no care. Safwa Freske, Safwa Freske. So it started a few days ago. Let me go to the beginning of the G's. Now for the last time Tanji Banto and Natalia Maggio's wife were on Facebook. They were on the G's. Poor guy. Attacking one another. Then I for Tanji Banto and Natalia Maggio's wife, Vivian Ines. They were on Facebook fighting one another, my brother. Now we got Tangi Banto and Safwa Megray. In fact, Tangi Banto says in one of her posts on Facebook that Safwa Megray must go tell their boyfriend. Two of them boyfriend. Hello, Waka. Did you hear what I said? I listened. Tangi Banto say Safwa go tell our boyfriend. Two of our boyfriend. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are the women that can say on Facebook, uh, my man, Joe, Joe, we are not small male. They men are hopeless men. A girlfriend that be fighting all over on Facebook. So Tangi Bando says to Safwa, 
So I will read the thing that Tanji Banto said. Your PSQs, your ears more because your children are listening, you're telling them to go far. <laughs> oh, Tanji rule. Now, 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 this is what Tanji Banto started by saying. Okay. You fighting to go marital that Safa is talking about now, Safa May Gray. Safa May Gray is the president of Nuka. She know what left from right, but she won't go to marital. She won't be the marital boss. You just don't want the same job too. So Tanji yeah. Banda saying, you fighting to go marital so you can be boss today on top of your friend. Eh? You can't speak in pure oil terms, that ocean terms you're able. <laughs> Tanji Banda says, Safa not know the oil terms to be here at Nuka. That ocean terms you won't go speak in a water business you won't go talk about now. Look at it, drive door. Hello, mm -hmm. that tangy bottle calling Safwa drive door. <laughs> they all are G's and I elevate the G's bar. Take it to the biggest platform. Now, tangy bottle wrote another post again. The very people you want and down with in any government are the very people you lying about to the president daily. Imagine if they actually gave you your dream job. In, in the next government, talking, we will rather really get killed, yo. So, Tanji Bando is saying, Safa used to eat and drink with Unity Party people. That one, that true. That true. Today, Safa is the one who be talking bad, bad thing about a friend who is a helper when she was in opposition. That one, that one, I want to get to the day again, your dream job, we will rather really die, yo. We will rather really die. Tanji Bando, go for it again. Mm. And they gave you that job to sell oil in the in, in the ground. You you think that to oh, meet Nigeria with Chinese bears and get fucked on the eighth floor? Mm. Hey, hey, hey. They just get you. They just get fucked. Tanji say they gave Safa that job to go farm for the selling oil, but Safa not do know that to be going around to be meeting Nigerian people with Chinese bear and be and, and be having sex mm. on the eighth floor. Now, I'm not a flow, boy. Why am I a flow? Why am I a flow? Tell me, why am I a flow? Tanji Bando for the Safa made great and not easy. So we are together fighting. <laughs> hey, let me let, let me read further. But what a flow? But I'm pretty looking for the air flow. I'm looking for air flow. Uh, which belly your air flow? Oh. Where the government is? The air flow, eh? A Ministry of Foreign, foreign Affairs. That, <laughs> eh? Maybe that foreign affair. Man, we with that. We all are billing. That foreign affair got an airflow. They have their second master not working right, right now. Now, Tanji Bottom writes again. President, we are pleased to appoint her as information minister, y'all. Her ass knows every, everything. All the other than her appointment you gave her. She vests because they gave her the wrong job. You lie. Tanji Bottom said they get the wrong job. They're not, they're not fault. Breaking news. May May. Okay, this is how they call our Facebook. That's a far name on Facebook. Our Facebook name. May May. Breaking news. May May, CEO of Noka. Don't know how to sell oil. Mr. President, please appoint her LBS to LBS. Send my point Safwa to LBS. Her strength is in news taking. Ah! Wow. This is Safwa can take news. Now, what she can, she, can, she can do? Oh, make me grave your CEO. Hold your ass here. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You telling people the president begging you not to cost me? So, support telling the people that say the president begging her not to cost Stanty. Eh? Say, don't, don't cost Stanty. Say, Joe, jo, we are telling. Sam, uh, um, Safa Gray telling people that Joe, we are telling her, say, oh, that, that ignore Tanji. Don't respond to Tanji. So, Tanji say, Meme, graveyard CEO. She said again, a graveyard CEO. <laughs> why, why, did, why did they call graveyard CEO? Graveyard CEO. Graveyard CEO hall. That means hall, oh, you can sleep all over. Bring your ass here. You telling people the president begging you not to cost me? Bring that your community body here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, community what? We both fucking the same man. So we we'll have enough to hey hey wait 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 wait. But what did, what did I just say? Mm. <laughs> I said 
Tanji get hard of me. And I accusing Tanji of loving the job. We are Tanji or second say on face, 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 Facebook. Let me read what he say again. Bring your community body here. What they call community body, Waka? Body are going all around. <laughs> Thank you. Waka will define it. We both fucking the same man. So we will have enough to cost about your childless, useless ass. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So your ass had a strong voice to cause all the rape protesters, but you not ever me. Can you ban banter say Safa made we were causing the rape protesters? But you not able to cause Tanji. Then Tanji say, then she telling people say the reason I'm not causing Tanji back is because the president told me not to bother Tanji. Tanji said a lie. Tanji say you didn't get vast on that important national topic, but you were told not to cost me. The law, you must cost CEO. Then you say, Safa must cost. Safa forced to cost. Safa mm -hmm. must say, the president said, I'm gonna cost her back. Then you raise again. You are mm -hmm. asking, say shit. So you have to come up with another lie about the president say. Nobody told your ass shit, Miss Gray. So you stay lying. That I fall. That I that the other G not fuck. That yeah, I Jesus, fuck. Bro. Listen, thank you bother Roy again. I don't fucking bother you, and yet you stand in front of the president to talk shit about me. Bitch, what the fuck were you thinking? You you should have known that I was going to hear that shit. I hear everything and laugh. But this one wasn't taking, but this time I was uh, this this one wasn't a joke, bitch. Bring your CV to chase your job and don't use my name. Hmm. <laughs> That's a small thing. That's a small thing. Thank you. Jeff, are you talking about it today? We'll call two of them for a meeting. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Baby Ellie, Idiot me, grandchild. Off the pack of ginger, y'all. Next time, the hatchet call I said, Baby Ellie. Next time you mix me up in sex and lies, I will meet you directly in uh, I'll meet you direct publicly. Mm. Oh yeah. By 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 the way, I know a damn good acne dog for that ground face. <laughs> Go gossip me again to our boyfriend. You will know who born dog, bitch. Thank you, Bado say. She dare suffer to go gossip her to their what? What's it, Waka? To their boyfriend. Go gossip me again to our boyfriend. You will know who born dog, bitch. Tanji Bando say, she and Safa make Greg get the same what? Boyfriend. Tanji Bando say, what place Safa make Greg have sex? Which, which, which flow? The A flow. That we building in government get A flow? The A for real affair. That who, that who in the for real affair? The Prezo. <laughs> In fact, uh, Baga, what score you get on Tanji Bato? Tanji Bato. Tanji, Tanji, Tanji Bato get 100, Safa Megre get 0. 100 points for Tanji Bato. Safa Megre, 0. So they say Safa, Safa won't go to Maritime. Amen. Mm -hmm. Tanji the bag, yeah, my man. But she won't count uh, Eugene, Eugene number 2 now. Oh, yeah, because Eugene want to see his job. Hmm? That's not fun. I mean, let's take three more calls, man. We're finna bring in the big G's. We gotta take small calls on the G's. What? <laughs> Thank you, brother. She and she and Safa make we're doing what? They're sleeping with a same man. Now, folks, we reading these things, so we are not the ones who said them also. Excuse our language. We're reading them as we, these are two girlfriends of the president. If I tell you can hide it, you heard her. She said, take my knee, don't go to our boyfriend to talk about me, to our boyfriend. Wow. Let's take a few more calls there, Baga, before we go. The G's too, it too juicy. Tangy Banto, 100 points. Safa Megre, 0 points. You know, Safa is very ungrateful and frisky. Penable don't like her, even in the, in the, in the, in the government. Safa Megre used to be hanging around with Stevie Yagasi and there, all the people there, all over time, all over here, like everybody, your player, player, chicle, and blah, blah, blah. And you know, so we are kind of power now, so far, just acting frisky on everybody. 
Ça va aller à la Bagawan ne va pas à la Eh bien, les ticlers, on va jouer à la Play à la Des enfants, j'ai ça, à la fresque. So, t'as dit, Banto, soki ho. Let the few calls them, man. Les gis en accord. Les gis en accord. You know, we don't you know, talk gis here. But les gis are national gis. When the two girlfriends of the president are, are making false on Facebook, the national G's. Yeah. National G's. Yeah. Let's take some calls. All right. So the president can have sex on the air flow. Hey. Good morning. See you again.
Eh, ça va m'aider when they want post to. It takes a very weak man to send someone to cuss me. You do know I am not. I I am a one man army. I do not respond to emissaries. You and I are on the same level. I do not pick a kick low. I got you. This is a message from Baby Ellen. Look at look at that. That's a wow. She mm. says somebody sends somebody to cuss her. So she will now she will she can't deal with emissary. <laughs> Listen now. Thank you, Bottle Roy. Another one. You went to Dubai, the UAE. The boys walked out of the meeting because you sound that stupid. They say Safa went to Dubai to go to oil business. The people they just left the meeting because Safa was just sounding stupid. And you see your ass still waiting for one gallon of oil bio. Brazo, don't give that job. Oh. She won't use it to solve her friend. Eh? They said, all Safa let her do. Tell her to have beat and buy. Beat and buy. That was Safa let her do. Eh? That all she let her do. Yeah, yeah, the, the girl said, yeah, our, our boyfriend, two or all, two or all boyfriend, the president, that two or all boyfriend. You broke the, you, you took the protein name to the president and lie on the man because he recommended Sam at LPRA and said how the protein wanted to steal money for opposition. They fired a ball. You still can sell one gallon of red oil. Baby Ellie. Hey, 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 the yeah, fast the facial. Fast the facial. Move from here. Can't talk about that. I don't want to go man. Billy guy, airflow. He said they 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 get any. They ain't mention job job job. We are new. The guy said go tell our our boyfriend, the president. Then he said what? Take two more calls here. Fuck on you, stupid man. Good morning. Good morning. I said, Tandy, yeah. as you waste it now, I will just put it on the show, man. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Bye, take the last call up. Okay, let's take this person here. Joey, you slept, man. Morning. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, where you calling from? Uh, sorry, let's take this person here. Good morning. How many floors the foreign ministry got, Bye, guy? <clears throat> if I think nine, eight, eight or nine floors. Eight or nine, yeah. And thank you, Banda. Say, what they can eat on the air? A flow. The air flow. Yeah. Let's take uh, Bibra Mame again. Bibra Mame, good morning. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, Bibra. Uh, I come back from Georgia. Good day, Mohammed. You know, when you have promiscuous person as a president, what is zero no? So we are going to beat this good to this country. We have brought our presidency to puppet this with peace. These are the these are the these are the forces that people are suffering. The way he gave our money, he gave our money to the little kids. Female, he gave it to them for a for to celebrate certain points. How the country will be progress. Every day they made a Jamaican resolve, having fun time with these girls. The country can to give them let me pay. Because they will they are starting to go. They will not pay our due to AU. They are when the money can go. But we, but, but I thought we get budgets. I thought we have budget surplus now. No, we don't have a budget surplus. <laughs> that's the way. That's the way. That's the problem. We have budget surplus. The project is going to take care of us. You got to send them five hundred there. The bank cannot throw out more. So the ministry there, you can. So foreign ministry is not there, friend. So the ministry of resort, they all learn. How the project will go for that? The project will be for that. Who may for that one guy? Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. We will take one more call, then we cross over to Costa. <laughs> hey, Tanti Bandova. We have budget surplus. We don't want to pay at the AU, but we're talking about budget surplus here in Liberia. Where all the money going here now? Hmm. Mm. Oh, God. 
Uh, we take one more person, then we cross over to uh, cost. Let's take this person. Good morning. They say, Joe, we ask you to thank you, Bango. Good morning. Hey, man, please listen to me. Don't listen to the receiver. Good morning. Yeah, that, that, that's our last call. Good morning. My last time. Okay, that person is not ready yet. Uh, so that's it. Um, All right, folks. Yeah. So, when Tanji Bando posts more, I will tell you tomorrow. More G's. More <laughs> G's. Tanji Bando versus Baby Ellen, aka well, Safa Megre, aka Baby Ellen. CKA, the graveyard CEO. <laughs> what did the graveyard mean? The graveyard CEO. I mean, the CEO yeah. can bring nothing. What did you have a graveyard? The CEO oh, can no, produce nothing. You don't understand me. Mm. Somebody posted and said it means uh, the person can play star if bear the jet. No, uh, no, I don't know what it means. Grey, uh, Tangi Bando can be there when Safa and Joe are sleeping, having sex. She can, she can be there. But she know they're doing it on the flow. But <laughs> that's what they want to say, you that, that, that Joe, we are getting there on Facebook for you know, That's what they want. But Grey, I see what means. Any anybody walking produce nothing. What in your what in your car or a graveyard walking? Nothing. When they say you graveyard CEO or you graveyard talk show host, I mean you not nothing. Nothing can come from you. So Tanji Bando says someone may gray is a is an unproductive CEO. Nothing can come from us. You can just gossip. They said the guy went to Dubai to go have a meeting with people. They put your wall all, all the meeting because of what you're talking nonsense. What's he know about? What's he know about oil business? What is Safa Gray know about oil business? Let like, get like, be a, be a, you know, the, the parent put someone a bird, they call it, be a, be a. you know, be a, be a? yeah, yeah, be a, be a, you know, you can just, you flap the wind, you pass it around, be a, be a, be a, be a. the house of what Gray looking like, be a, be a. she can't get she, she just get be more, she frisky, be more girl. Yeah, my man, I'll see you, man, tomorrow. Okay. Tanji Banto versus Safwa May Gray. Mm -hmm. We are two girlfriends fighting on Facebook. Very, very interesting. We'll bring more G's tomorrow. Tanji in Hey. Tanji Banto. My girl wife says she got a new picture of Tanji. Tanji go post her own picture. Huh. And to be honest, the picture was found. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, to, to be very honest, when I saw Tangi, I said, oh, but Tangi not bow. <laughs>